Hey guys, here's Unit 3, Freedom of Speech and Press. Okay, you guys want to look at uh, how freedom of speech and press are protected by uh, the Constitution and uh, various Supreme Court uh, rulings over the years that have to deal with speech and press. So freedom of speech and press does not protect defamatory speech. Defamatory speech is either libel or slanders. Now, libel uh, is the false and malicious use of written words. If you're writing something down and lying about somebody and publishing it as the truth, that is libel. That is against the law. That's not protected under your First Amendment freedom of press. And slander is your spoken false or malicious words. You go on, on uh, a talk show or you go on a podcast and you're just blatantly lying about someone and putting it off. This is the truth. And everybody believes it, it's the truth, but you're blatantly telling lies. Well, that is slander, and that is not protected under your First Amendment freedom of speech. Okay, libel goes into, like, even online, you can't pass stuff off. Even though people do that all the time, it is against the law. Libel laws uh, will get you. And so the false malicious use of writ written words is libel. False and malicious you spoke words of slander. There's two big uh, types of defamatory speech that you need to know and remember. Uh, you need to remember the difference between those two. Is, uh, slander is spoken. We'll start from S, spoken, slander, and libel. You're going to write it down. So I'm saying that any speech or act which strongly offends the morality of the time, any kind of, you know, uh, you know swearing all the time, uh, pornographic material, uh, obscene gestures, and lewd comments, stuff that's not necessarily protected either. So words that incite others to commit crimes. If you're telling somebody, you know, rallying up a group and they're going to commit a crime because of your words, that your words are not protected under freedom of speech, First Amendment. And treason, insurrection, uh, forcibly resisting federal laws, encouraging disloyalty in the armed forces, all those things are not covered under the First Amendment. Okay, so defamatory speech, libel, slander, obscenity, if you incite violence, if you incite, if you break the law, tell others to break the law, disloyal to the armed forces, like burning draft cards or whatnot, want to overthrow the government, all that is not covered, and you will get in trouble because uh, violating the law is not protected under the First Amendment freedom of speech or press. Free exchange ideas. Freedom of speech press guarantees are meant to protect each other's free expression. Okay, whether spoken, written, communicated, online, in paper, on in uh, radio, broadcast, podcast, uh, is it protects you. Okay, we write to freely express ourselves, say what we want to say within reason. Protects all persons' right to complete discussion of public affairs. What's going on in the public? We have the right to talk about it. The government's not going to squelch us. They're not going to come to the door and squelch our speech. As long as it's not libel or slander, we can talk about it or advocate and overthrow the government or whatnot. And so mainly put into the Constitution to protect political speech so we can talk about our government, talk about what's going on in our government and how to solve issues without the government squelching that speech. Okay, we have the freedoms here. That's what you know. We talked about in, in the unit one how the press is the watchdogs, and they watch over the, the government and write about uh, what's going on in the government, good or bad. So we have the right to freely talk about. You know, a great example of this is the president of the United States, who is the most scrutinized person in the in the world. Uh, you know, whether uh, no matter who he is or she. Uh, and and so we have the right here in this country to criticize our our uh, president and our leaders, and that's okay. Okay, that's political speech, the political debate, and that's okay. Okay, that's protected under your First Amendment freedoms. Okay, symbolic speech that's also protected. One of the greatest symbolic symbolic speech uh, court cases was Tinker versus Des Moines. Group of kids in in Iowa, Des Moines, Iowa, wanted to wear armbands to protest the Vietnam War. They got in trouble at school. Went all the way to Supreme Court. Supreme Court says, "Yeah, the kids have the right to do that. They have the right to wear these armbands 
It's symbolic speech. Okay, so wearing these armbands is protected. Right? Picketing. Okay, patrolling a business site by workers on strike. Prevent, uh, you know, it happens a lot. You know, we, we unions go on strike, demand better wages, better conditions, health care, you know, hours, so on and so forth. They picket. And, or you can protest outside a, you know, like uh, the West World Bap- Baptist Church who protests outside all kinds of stuff. Uh, they have the right to do that. That's uh, symbolic speech. You, you can have the right to picket uh, as long as it doesn't incite violence, uh, as long as it's not advocating the overthrow of government. Um, you can do that. Peer speech, expressed in front of an audience, has chosen to listen. If your audience pays or have chosen, I'm going to go to this guy's rally and listen to him talk. And this guy's spewing all kinds of junk. Uh, your junk's protected by law. But in 2019, you're not protected by society because everybody has cell phones. You go on a videotape, you're saying, sp- spilling off your junk, and then you'll be all over the news, and you can get in trouble by society, which could sometimes be even worse than controlled by the law. So you always have to watch what you say. Okay, peer speech protected by law? Not so much by society anymore with the way things are with cameras everywhere. And one of the biggest Supreme Court cases that have to deal with the First Amendment is Shank versus the United States in 1919. Okay, a great video here by Hip Hughes. You can check that out. Link in the description below. Uh, it really tells... Uh, Tells the story of Shank versus the United States. Uh, very well done. Maybe he's a rec- highly recommend his videos if you haven't checked him out. Uh, and it's about clear and present danger. Does his speech present a clear and present danger to society, to the people there, to the country, to the world? So Shank spoke out against the war. World War I. He was against it. He said, we should not go to war. You know, don't join the war. Fight against it. Okay, speech is very anti-government, very anti-war. He was very much against it. So, but the ruling established the ability of governments to suppress speech and press. If his speech is clear and present danger, getting people rallied against the troops, rallying against the government, it's not going to help our effort in the war. It's clear and present danger to our country. For the example they gave was yelling fire in a movie theater. You can't do that because you're putting everyone's lives at risk. There's no fire and yelling fire, and everybody's trampling over each other, and people get seriously injured or killed. Uh, you're at fault. Okay, you do not have freedom of speech to yell fire uh, if there is none. Okay, because you're putting people in clear and present danger. Okay, you're yelling bomb on an airplane. Same thing. Yours, your rights end right there. So it illustrates continuing conflict with free speech and government authority. Your rights are not absolute. If they infringe on the rights of others. They are not absolute. If your rights infringe on someone else's rights, your rights end right there. If you're if you're infringing on someone else, you cannot say and do whatever you want. The Constitution does not guarantee you to say or do whatever you want. Okay, if it puts people in clear and present danger, you will be at fault for it. It's a symbolic test. You know, symbolism. Laid out in U.S. versus O'Brien, 1968. Brian Burns draft card, a symbol of I'm not going to war. He burned Boston Courthouse. He said he was expressing his opposition to the war. He was convicted under federal law, though, and made destruction or mutilation of draft cards a crime. The Supreme Court ruled that the criminal prohibition against the burning draft card did not violate the First Amendment guaranteeing freedom of speech. And so it puts people in clear and present danger. It kind of goes back to Shank. It reiterates that. So the object of protest is within the constitutional powers of the government. Whatever restriction is placed on the expression is no greater than necessary. And the government's real interest in the matter is to not to squelch dissent, just to protect the citizens, protect the people around, to protect the country. It's not to get someone in trouble for spewing off junk or burn a Jeff card. But if you're, if that's endangering others, remember, your rights end when any friends on others. If you're endangering others, your rights end. Prior restraint. In most cases, the government cannot curb ideas before they are expressed. Right? Prior restraint. You cannot punish ideas before they are expressed, but after you do them, after you say them, you can get in trouble for it. 
So if someone's going with, uh, you know, put posters out, we're have a rally, and we're gonna do this. The government can't get you in trouble for that. But if you actually have the rally and do it and incite violence and chaos, then yes, you can get in trouble for that. Prior restraint, no. So, in Nevers, Minnesota, the court protected the right to even miscreant purveyors of scandal. Okay, what was going on here in near versus Minnesota is that the, it was Minnesota law that forbade publication of any malicious, scandalous, or defamatory periodicals. So you can't like bash somebody in the in the newspaper. You know, you can't. If someone did something wrong, you can't bring it out to light. And in, in Minneapolis paper ran a series of articles charging the chief of police with corruption. He's very corrupt. He says, I'm charging you with this, and he brought it out. The Minnesota's like, you can't say that. That's that's, that's malicious speech. That's that's going to get this guy in trouble, and you can't do that. So the court says, no more publication of your newspaper. Well, let's take the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, well, second thought, new laws squelching free speech because the article is not slander or libel. Okay? And so he has the freedom to do what he wants. Now, if he was libel, then yes, it Supreme Court would have backed him up, but it was he was telling the truth. Okay, that's what the press does. And then New York Times versus United States, and I said one huge Supreme Court uh, case here. Government sought the court order to keep newspapers printing, printing on papers. There are leaked documents about the how we got involved in the Vietnam War. Kind of, it would put the uh, U.S. You know, in danger as people would be turning more against the war if this got leaked out. Well, the Supreme Court says, eh, papers don't show any endangerment to national security enough. We're going to publish these papers. They, are, they can be published. So depending on papers, uh, Defense Department, leading to civil war, Supreme Court ruled against the government here, and the papers could be released. Because if not present, goes back to Shank versus the United States, that clear and present danger. And it's a dicious speech. So next, talking about seditious speech, where it's a crime of attempting to overthrow the government by force or disrupt its lawful activities by a violent acts. So just speech is a speech that urges such conduct, where you're if you're advocating the overthrow of the government, it's seditious speech and that is not covered under the First Amendment freedom. Treason, that's in the Constitution. Treason is. Okay, if you have to betray one's country to an enemy, if you're going to spy uh, for the Russians. Uh, that is treason. And so, so they, if you're advocating over the government or going on over the government, that's not protected under the First Amendment. And so Congress enacted three major laws to prevent these over the years. Alien Sedition Acts, John Adams, uh, the first one introduced these. That kind of, that was declared unconstitutional. Uh, but there are variations of them over the years have took place. Uh, scandalous and false criticism of government, illegal. Right. Sedition Act of 1917 made it a crime to encourage disloyalty or spread anti-government ideas during a time of crisis. Upheld by the Supreme Court, it says clear and present danger. Once again, Shank's the precedent of all this stuff. It all goes back to Shank. So the Smith Act forbade advocating violent overthrow to government and belonging knowingly to a group that does, like a communist party or terrorist organization. So it's uh, it is constitutional, but uh, it's very difficult to enforce the actual Smith Act. Okay, obscenity, okay, obscenity laws are enforced under postal power. Right, obscenity laid out with the Miller versus California, nineteen seventy three. Average person finds work appeal, prudent interest, judging from contemporary standards. So if it meets the standards of the time, it's not very uh, crude or. Uh, you know, it's okay. Uh, the work that describes of offensive sexual conduct that specific outlawed have seen, you can't do it. Or the work lacks serious value of any variety. Okay. Love Mark Twain quote here. So censorship is telling a man he can have a steak just because a baby can't chew it. Okay. Perfect example of censorship. Okay. What is obscene? Okay. You can't just, you know, bring out pornographic materials. Uh, so how you wear how you get around that? Yeah, they decide to put articles. So it's some kind of value in uh, in the work, and so that's how you get around the obscenity laws. Miller versus California. Miller, after conducting a mass mailing campaign, advertised adult materials, convicted of violating California statute prohibiting 
the distribution of these materials. Some unwilling recipients of those brochures complained to the police, initiating legal proceedings. All right. Is the sale and distribution of obscene materials by mail protecting our First Amendment freedom of speech guaranteed? Uh, obscene materials are not protected from the First Amendment. All right. It's not protected. You can't just print out the obscene materials and send them out to everybody. That's not protected under the freedom of press. You will get prosecuted for that. And here's a big one here for the schools. So can a student print whatever they want, whatever they feel like printing about whoever, however they want? Because, you know, freedom of press, freedom of speech. Well, Hazelwood School District for Schoolmeyer and 1988 in St. Louis, Missouri, settles this dispute. So the background of this case, students wrote newspaper articles about teen pregnancy, divorce, birth control, changing names, of course, uh, to protect their privacy. But the school deemed them inappropriate and took the articles out of the paper. Students said, you can't do that, First Amendment, and they sued a the school district. Well, this case goes all the way to the Supreme Court. So the question is, were the rights of the freedom of speech protected and the First Amendment violated when two articles written by the school's newspaper staff were deleted by school officials? Well, according to the uh, Supreme Court, no. The school has the right to squelch and censor anything they deem inappropriate. Okay, the freedom of speech and press by the school district has the right to censor you, has the right to limit what you're going to say. And so students have the freedom of speech, but it is limited. It's like it is in the real world. Okay, you have freedom of speech to say whatever you want from your press, right? Whatever you want, but it's limited. Your rights are limited. And a school can set limits on what can be published under the school's newspaper and settings. I think the media. Okay, freedom of press video. Uh, check that out. Uh, the relationship between freedom of speech and press and the media. Confidentiality. The Supreme Court found that the Constitution does not allow members of the news media to keep the sources confidential in court of law, uh, 30 states have passed shield laws to kind of protect that called gag orders. Right? The media serves as watchdogs and gatekeepers. We'll talk about that in Unit 1. So motion pictures, are they covered? Okay, 1915, the Supreme Court held motion pictures were a business, not a form of expression, so they were not protected under the freedom of expression guarantees, but as reversed in 1952. Both radio and television media are subject to more government regulation. Okay, and they are regulated by an organization called the FCC, Federal Communication Commission. You know, Eminem, Eminem, famous Eminem line, the FCC won't let me be. So the Federal Communication Commission, okay, they're regulated by that. They regulate the airwaves. Television and radio airwaves are regulated by the government. You know, that's why you hear radio edits of songs because you can't have these curse words flying out in the radio airwaves for everybody to hear. Right, Freedom of Information Act. Anything that's not classified by government, you have the right to see and view. Right, commercial speech. Commercial speech is speech uh, for business purposes, usually advertising. Okay, corporations usually have the same First Amendment rights as individuals. For many years, I believe the First and Fourth Amendment did not protect advertising, but guess what? It does. Okay, 1970, the Supreme Court stated that it did. But there are exceptions to this. One of my favorite ads of all time, Dove Evolution, kind of shows just how it shows just how much uh, we're tricked into. You know, this ordinary woman goes in there and they modify her to make her look like the quote unquote perfect woman. And Bill was put out in front of schools, and these girls are looking at it like, oh, I gotta be just like her. But in reality, you can't because that person's fake. So it's a really good uh, commercial. Watch that. Uh, so if you're vol if you're going to talk about false advertisement, advertising illegal goods, brochure tobacco products, okay, you can't do that. Those are not protected. Okay, commercial speech has a lot more restrictions uh, than regular speech. You can't just go out there and advertise anything and everything. All right. So that is it for uh, freedom of press and speech. Uh, until next time, see you later.